Welcome to Petacomp's online version of our Bring Your Own Device course. Preparation for the course The necessity to work with two simultaneous views on your computer. Almost all modules of the course require watching online tutorials, pausing the tutorial to practice the skills observed in a live version of the application, and then continuing with the tutorial. It is possible to do this with only one computer screen, by switching backwards and forwards between your browser tab containing the tutorial, and the browser tab containing the application you are practicing in. However, you will find it much easier to manage the switching backwards and forwards between the tutorial, and the application, if you have two monitors attached to your computer, and use the monitor extend feature in Windows, and in Mac OS which allows you to have the tutorial on the left or right monitor, and the live app on the other monitor. This will allow you to have both the tutorial, and the live app, visible to you simultaneously, one on the left monitor, and the other on the right monitor. We realize that it is not common for most teachers to have two monitors at their disposal, and so we have researched, and suggest below, a number of alternatives that enable you to use either your iPad, Android tablet, or TV, as the second monitor. We've explained the options below, and included videos below that, to detail the setup of each option. Option 1. Borrow a spare monitor from school, a friend, or colleague. Most teachers have access to a laptop. And all laptops have a VGA monitor adapter, as one of the sockets available on the laptop. If you are able to obtain a spare monitor, all Windows operating systems, from version 7 and above, and all Apple iMac operating systems, have built into them the ability to recognize a monitor attached through this VGA monitor adapter, and use it as an extension of your screen, allowing you to view two apps simultaneously one on each monitor. Option 2. Use an iPad as an extension monitor on your laptop or computer. In this section you'll find a tutorial on how to use an iPad as an extension monitor on your laptop or computer. Option 3. Use an Android tablet as an extension monitor on your laptop or computer. In this section you'll find a tutorial on how to use an Android tablet as an extension monitor on your laptop or computer. Option 4. Use a TV screen as an extension monitor on your laptop or computer. In this section you'll find a tutorial on how to use a TV screen as an extension monitor on your laptop or computer. Once you have a second screen attached to your computer, we've included below tutorials on how to extend your Windows or iMac computer screen to it. You can also follow these simple instructions. In Windows, on your keyboard, hold down your Windows key, and press the P character. The monitor selection window will open. Select Extend. Obtaining the components necessary to complete the section on sharing devices between multiple students. The section of the course on sharing devices between multiple students to allow up to four children to collaborate on one device requires that a group of between two and four teachers work together to experiment with how to connect multiple keyboards and mice to a single device. For you and other teachers to be able to complete this required section, your school will need to purchase one set of three USB wired silicon keyboards, three USB wired mice, one USB seven port hub, at a total cost of approximately $50. The easiest way to purchase these is on eBay. Why you need the Chrome browser on your and your students' devices?
and why you need the Puffin browser on iPads. Our face-to-face -face sessions of the BYOD course confirmed that the full range of devices, including Windows laptops, Windows tablets, Google Chromebooks, Apple iPads, and Apple iMacs, is being used by schools, with most schools not requiring a specific type of device from their students. That finding confirmed our decision to design our BYOD course so that it could support each and every type of device a school might allow students to use. The way for us to do this was to follow the general move away from proprietary device-specific apps towards generic browser-based apps. For this reason, almost all of the apps studied in this course are accessed via browser. However, the battle between Microsoft, Google, and Apple for market supremacy has caused them to create sometimes slight, sometimes significant, differences between the way their browsers operate. Because Google Education and its various apps and cloud storage options has become important in school technology use, this course covers, in some detail, its use. To be able to complete this course, you therefore must have the Google Chrome browser installed on your device, and you should try, as far as possible, to use Google Chrome as your browser when completing the course. We are aware that if you are a teacher in a New South Wales Department of Education school, the DOE has advised that it will not support the Google Chrome browser. It is important to understand that this does not mean that the DOE is suggesting that schools not install the Chrome browser on devices. It is instead a reflection of the limited resources available to the DOE to provide direct support of the full range of apps and browsers, and is a note to schools that choose to use the Chrome browser and run into problems that they will have to resolve them themselves and not rely on official DOE support. We have as yet not come across any school in the 300 or so schools that have had teachers attend our face-to-face -face course that has experienced problems with Google Chrome. In relation to iPads, if you or your school are using iPads, you should also install on your iPads the Puffin browser. This is because on iPads, Puffin supports web pages that include Adobe Flash content better than the Safari and Chrome browsers. If you experience problems accessing a web page effectively on an iPad in the Chrome or Safari browsers, try accessing the web page in Puffin. Information on how to complete the course The course is constructed from training materials that we have created and also from YouTube training tutorials which we have used the Edpuzzle facility to enhance with questions and information. Completion of the course requires completion of steps which indicate competency in the skills learned. This is especially important in relation to new scheme teachers where Pedacomp is required to maintain records that confirm that the award of professional development credits confirms achievement of designated standards. To validate completion, progress by teachers through the various segments of the course is automatically recorded by our system. You will notice that most of the video tutorials include pauses for you to answer questions. The questions may seem simplistic, but they do provide evidence that you have progressed through the segment and have engaged with the material. Collaboration with other teachers A core requirement of the course is that teachers engage with other teachers who are also completing the course to experiment with the collaboration features of apps. This involves teachers collaborating with each other in the way that students might and teachers working together so that one can take the place of a teacher and one or more the place of students to see how students and teachers interact within the apps. Where the apps themselves cannot provide Pedacomp with confirmation of collaborative engagement, we have requested that screenshots be provided as evidence of collaboration.
Our suggestion for obtaining the screenshots, if you're using a Windows computer, is that the Windows Snipping tool will be used. In case you're not familiar with the Windows Snipping tool, we've provided below a video tutorial on using the tool. Obtaining completion credit for the course. You'll notice that some sections of the course are marked as core sections, and others are marked as optional. To obtain credit for the course, all core sections must be completed. If you are a new scheme teacher, the core part of the course counts as 16 hours of BOSTES endorsed training for the standards shown in this list. The non-core sections each count as a separate BOSTES endorsed mini course, each listed separately on the BOSTES website. The hours of credit awarded for each separate mini course is detailed in that course section. To obtain your BOSTES credit, advise us upon your completion of your course, and we will review the sections you have completed and update your BOSTES credit. Course content. Using technology in the classroom to prepare students for the changing future of work. The widespread, accelerating adoption of technology in the workplace has had a significant effect on the nature of work over past decades. And experts suggest that with the progress and development of data storage and communications technology, robot technology, and computer artificial intelligence. Within the next two decades, the nature of work our current students will be engaging in when they enter the workforce will have changed to something substantially different from today's world. If teachers have an understanding of how technology is changing work at an accelerating rate, on how and why it will continue to change work, they will be able to use technology in their classrooms to help students prepare for the types of work they will need to be ready to engage in. This BYOD course contains videos that introduce teachers to current and future changes in work, caused by technological change. This then leads into a section on how to leverage both BYOD and classroom technology generally, to help prepare students for that change in work.